This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Recording has started. Hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie the professor at the, with me as always is the best blue eyed bomber look at this phil phil me and perch he's playing with me because we were having sound trouble earlier so he's like no no, no. i, th- I think no i think you froze for a second so uh, i uh, ah yeah. yeah sure i froze well one of us so. had stage fright. um <laughs> so philip let's uh let's talk let's talk obi-wan kenobi Okay. Because uh, it got cut from six episodes down to four. And now is it it's it's on some kind of hold or something? I don't know quite what the hold is. I just know that it's been... I think it has something... Cut. Yeah. It, it, yeah, they took it down to four, and then I think is it something about the writing? I don't know if they wanted to change yeah. something or... Well, you know what it is? And here's the truth of it. When they started writing this thing, I don't think... Because we know how tight-lipped Disney is with all of its big reveals. Mm-hmm. So I think that the staff had started working on it without realizing how central the theme of moisture farming <laughs> was going to be to the overall arc of the Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. And so they realized, like, you're going way off of moisture farming in this, man. This is, this is about the, the simple, humble joys of moisture farming and why Luke should have stayed on Uncle Owen's farm and become a successful moisture farm. Maybe got a nice little hot wife, lived a good life on tattoo. Yes. Then he loses his hand, goes to a temple, <laughs> never kisses a girl except his sister. <laughs> it's not a good life. But think of the joys of being a moisture farmer, living off the sand, bringing moisture to all the people of Tatooine. So that all of pe- all people, huts, Tuscan raiders, whatever Greedos people are called, can all feel moist. That's that was what-, what the series is about. That it's not about being a cosmic space wizard. You know what I always that a humble moisture farm. Well, that's what I I always wondered. It's like if those droids hadn't shown up with that message, would Obi Wan have just let let Luke be a moisture farmer his whole life? Exactly. That was the plan. And then these freaking droids show up. Freaking, this is why we wipe your memory, C-3PO. This is why you're not supposed to be here today. Well, R2's the one actually played the message. I know, R2. See, should have wiped R2's memory, too. Yeah, they're like, oh, this droid can't talk. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> he, he can't talk. Everyone understands him. Well, I mean, C-3PO can, can understand him. Well, I mean... Theoretically, Luke does too, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Droids. I'm just saying. It just seems. Yes. That, yeah, I I think that was, I think that's actually what you're supposed to get at the end of this thing. And they're like, like, why are you putting all these lightsaber duels in this? That's not what Star Wars is about. (laughs) It's about reclaiming the earth and being, or Tatooine, and being a moisture farmer. There's going to be an episode where they're going to go to that Mirror Mirror universe where, like, Anakin just told Obi Wan, "No, can you take me back to my mom and just buy her freedom, no. and me and her can just live on Tatooine and not have to get involved in your crazy space war? <laughs> and you can go be a space wizard off in your thing, but we, I want to go home and see my mom because I miss her. And then he goes home, and then he gets to be Big Brother Annie and Little Brother Owen, and they build their moisture farm." You know, maybe there's a little, a little, a little competition with Amparu. You know, she winds up with Owen because you know those two were meant to be. But you know, I think Anakin finds his own love. Find, maybe Padme comes back and says, "You know what? I'm tired of being a queen. I want to farm some moisture too." Exactly. Do right. a little Green Acres theme there, where it's like, you know, goodbye city life. Right. How many lives could you have saved, and how much damage could you undo just by keeping Annie on the farm? Exactly. And then you, you think about it, and like. Now Palpatine doesn't have an apprentice. You know, not even Jar Jar goes back. Jar Jar, I'm going back to, I'm going back to where I'm from, man. Seriously, I mean, 
I mean, Palpatine never would have uh, defeated Sam Jackson if uh, Anakin hadn't been there. Exactly. And so it really, and so it's like that Palpatine, ah, now I will do, do you. And he's like, Melon Farmer, please. <laughs> and Moisture Farmer, please. And just, you know, purple light chambers and out the window. It's like, whew, good thing the Sith aren't a problem, huh? <laughs> Who who thought the senator was a Sith? Who knew? <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. It's like if Anakin is in the farm, if Luke is in the farm, you know, the Empire would have collapsed under its own weight. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, you know, and that's the thing. Like you say, oh, the the exhaust port's a meter wide. Well, yeah, that's actually pretty big. That's like a little more than a yard. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's a pretty big target when you're flying right up to it with guided missiles. You know, mm-hmm. we we can hit a womp rat with a guided missile right now. You know, it's actually relatively easy for us to do. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think I think the Empire would have fallen and we wouldn't have a bunch of space wizards running around <laughs> trying to tell people what to do. Because, you know, I think that and that's the story of the Skywalkers It's like, no, you know, space space wizardings for party tricks. <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, look, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Maybe they are, you know, and that's that's the fun of the Force. You don't have to be moving galaxies for this stuff, man. Oh, yeah. So they come back to four episodes, which, you know, it, it um, I forget uh, who's that. It's not Liam Neeson. Who's, who's um, McKellen? Ian you, McKellen. No, Ewan McGregor. Is uh, our Obi-Wan. Ewan McGregor. Oh, Ewan McGregor. I don't know. It's, a, it's one of those mixed people. One of those Irishmen. One of them Irish actors. I mean, they might have just cut yeah, season... Yeah, one of them Irish actors. I mean, they might just cut season one down to four. I mean, if it gets to season two, I'm sure, yeah, you know, they could always do yeah, more well, episodes. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, it was talking about, oh, would they bring in Jar Jar? Would they bring in Garth Maul, you know? Jar Jar would be great, because it's like, oh, Misa thinks you should just let him be a moisture farmer. No! <laughs> like, no, he's the son of the chosen one. He's got to do... Like, are you... <laughs> Misa thinks you you wrong, and maybe you th- you should let him be a moisture farmer. <laughs> then, then then we get that Jar Jar death scene because I mean he doesn't show I mean he doesn't show up in any movie after three. Well, we know in the books that he winds up back on Naboo. Okay, uh, basically entertaining refugee children. That's his gig. You know, he's the clown that laughs, um, or the clown that, the clown that cries. Um, you know, and he, you know, again, a person who goes from. The, the turmoil of this galactic nonsense and find simple joy in the theater. Mm-hmm. You know? And like, maybe that's, that's what it's about. Maybe we should go back and just be moisture farmers. That's what, that's why it was all this thing about grain trade and all this stuff in that first trilogy. Cause this is what, this is what George was trying to tell us, man. <laughs> George knew. Mm-hmm. Like all this call to adventure? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get called to adventure? Eh, tell him I'm not home. Tra- Good thing we have caller ID this day. Tra- trade negotiations and moisture farming. That's what brings the kids in. <laughs> well, well, it's not about bringing the kids in. It's about teaching them a valuable lesson. You yeah. don't need to bring the kids in. They're gonna come. You know, if I make a movie, they will come. You know, I can put yeah, anything. Like, oh goodness. You know, you know, Rise of the Skywalker only made $3 billion. You know, like, really? Oh, what a disappointment that must be for Disney. We could put anything in these movies. Just just give the kids the, the flashy swords and they'll be fine. Well, you know, it's not even about giving the kids the flashy swords. Again, it's that it's a decent movie. Yeah, yeah. And the theme is moisture farming. No, I was talking basically more like the prequels. It's like, you know, tra- trade routes, you know, more, you know. Well, yeah. And those were those were a decent movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is horribly offensive. That, oh, they they implied that there was a political system. Oh no, I don't. I don't hate those movies. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't hate those movies as much as some people do. Now, now. Yeah, well, that's it's like like I say, it's like I can't hate them. I can't hate them that much because there there's nothing that bad in them. It's not like you know. It's you know, I'm sure that you know. I'm sure the Rift Tracks guys can can make jokes about it. But even then, it's like you know, uh, they, they make jokes about the first Avenger, which is a fantastic movie. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. That's what those guys do. They just make oh, snide yeah. comments about film. So you know, it's like yeah, you know, it's, and you know, sometimes it's funny, and sometimes it's fun to watch a movie and like ah, oh, you know, that is kind of silly what they do there. You know, but at the same time, it's like uh, you know, 
Yeah, it got cut back a bit. And also, and again, what I've said from the start is that they really, I think with the Star Wars franchise, they're like, you know, let's not do Picard. <laughs> let's not just do yeah. some kind of story that is what everybody, that is just nostalgia, just the characters you know, just the stories we've already retread. Let's tell new stories in this universe. And so I think what they want to do is they maybe want to tell some new stories with a and I think they want to tell a couple new stories with Obi Wan, but it's like, do we need six? Because because here's spoiler alert: he never dies, Luke's okay, and they don't talk for twenty years. I mean, <laughs> I would I would rather have a strong a strong four than like you know having to like yeah. drag it a little bit to get the six. Yeah, like I said, I hope they don't undercut Owen as a character. Mm. I really hope there are like some really good early interactions between Owen and. Obi Wan, where Owen's like, dude, you want him to be a space wizard? How's that working out for you? Exactly, you're the last freaking space wizard in the universe, and you're living in a cave. Well, there's Yoda too, but it's like, oh, you got, you know, there's two of you left, and you're all, both in exile. Well, Owen doesn't know that. Oh, uh, tr- well, who knows yeah. what Obi Wan? I mean, there's actually like probably like six or seven. There's always, oh, I thought I was the last Jedi. I actually thought it would be really good to have an episode called "The Last Jedi." Mm-hmm. Where you actually like meet somebody who is force sensitive, but he's just like a stage magician. Yeah, but I and mean, he's like he builds himself as the last Jedi. Ah, well that was my, just all sleight of hand and magic. Well, that was my problem with Yoda. It's like at the end of three, he's like, "Go into exile, I must." And then it's like, besides training Luke, he doesn't do anything. Did he ever have a plan to come back, or was he just going to run and hide for the rest of his life? He was going to go. He was farming moisture on Dagobah, which is like, okay, first off. Easiest place in the universe to farm moisture. Oh yeah. <laughs> just gonna say that. Just gonna say that. Eat, Maybe he was farming dryness. I don't know. Eating some frogs. And farming dryness. We'll have dryness that we can export throughout hey. the universe. Hey, is he he was eating frogs. I mean, hell, on a swamp planet. I mean, that would be like us going to like you know, oh, it's a planet full of steak. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, I would imagine, and, and again, the importance of moisture is like, well, you know, wherever I gotta go. Better be moist because we all know <laughs> how central moisture is to us carbon based life forms. So we, be- I better go someplace. I'll go to Dagobah. I'll go to a nice swamp planet. And it, and hey, and, and and no good uh, plots of land for you know Walker, you know Adats and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it'd be very hard to get any kind of. And I, I think that might have been part of his theory. It's like I'll go some, I'll go to the most miserable spot in the universe. Which is the old joke, you know, you go to the most miserable spot in the universe, and they're not going to come and take your land away. Exactly. Uh-huh. I, mean, I mean, Luke lands two seconds later, that fighter is in the water. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the stormtroopers were... And, you know, and for what it's worth, you know, uh, Yoda has stealth on it, you know? Because mm-hmm. I like, got plus three on all his stealth roads, so... I mean, it is literally impossible for him to botch to have a failure on a stealth roll if he has a plus three. Because <laughs> it's like, no, actually, that's technically a three. <laughs> that's technically a four, you know? I cannot get lower than a four on my stealth roll. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's, you know, yeah. And like you said, I would rather have a solid four yes. than six that are kind of spinning their wheels. Yes. And I think this is maybe, there's maybe something here that we need to. So here's the thing, because also at this, this is coming on the heels of the fact that first off, uh, Tiger Dazzler got canceled. Oh, uh, which... yeah. And, and Howard yeah. the Duck. Well, I was going to get to that. Fella. Sorry. It's called building, building a story. Because it starts with one and then it goes to another. You tease. Yes. Well, no, because, well, because it's two different things. So when Tiger Dazzler gets cut <laughs> yes. and they say it's because of creative differences. Quote unquote. Yes. We all immediately thought, well, I thought it's, oh, they got a little too Harley Ivy for people's taste. It's Disney plus. Remember not Disney, not Disney times. Um, Different because the times is an X. Oh, okay. Ah, yes. <laughs> it's not Disney after dark. It's not the Twenty One Club. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I get the feeling that there was this idea that yeah, that, that we thought that must have been, that that must have been the creative difference. As it turns out, I think I, the, I think the creative difference might have been like you know what? I just don't think that you're up to Disney Plus standards. And it's a lot of money to spend to have filler content, and we don't really need filler content because people are watching bed knobs and broomsticks. People are watching black hole. People are watching 
a thousand nineties Disney teen comedy. Do you think maybe do you think maybe these series were a little too adult for the brand they wanted to build over at Disney Plus? I mean well, I mean Howard the Duck that's definitely possible, especially if you're putting uh freaking Kevin, Kevin Smith. Uh you know, what's his name? Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith in charge. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that could be the thing. It's like, you know, I you know, we want to do Howard the Duck. We don't want to do Kevin you know, Smith. we, we want to do Howard the Duck not fits the cat. Mm, you know? Mm. It's like that, you know, there's a difference. And for what it's worth, there's a difference even in the comics. Mm-hmm. You know, for whatever you want to say about Howard the Duck, he never really goes dirty or filthy, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like even the Max titles at Marvel were always a little, you know. Yeah, yeah. They weren't Alan Moore writing these books, you know? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, there's, you know, keep the pedophile to your own books, Alan. Um oh. Not gonna let that kid guy watch my kid. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, yeah. I, I get the feeling maybe it was people getting a little too adult, and they're like, you know, that's that's not where we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that with Howard the Duck here. You know, first off, when we're gonna do that stuff, it's gonna be around our Deadpool brand, which we've already got got established. Mm-hmm. And more to the point, what we are getting is we're getting Patton Oswalt um, as Modoc. Which I think is going to thread that needle of adult humor within the context of a show that is still about finding yourself and being a better person. Yeah, but do you think, I mean, with that, uh, I mean, you don't think the writing's on the wall for MODOK, though? I mean, now the Tiger, Dazzler, and Howard the Duck have been canceled? No, no. Actually, I think MODOK is in the safest place because, first of all, it's already cast. You know, we have the entire cast from Monica or from, uh, well, yeah, Monica Rapacini to, uh, Modoc himself being played by Pat Oswalt, you know? Mm. So that one is moving f- forward full stream ahead. And there's nothing about it except for the, and it actually seems like they're going to be doing Modoc as Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Modoc is, you know, he's like, uh, estranged from his family. He's estranged from his supervillain organization and trying to figure out how to be, a better Modoc, which makes me wonder if we're going to get a Gwenpool in that. Because mm. I get the feeling that they're they're like looking for a way to brand these things in a way that's going to be, you know, like DuckTales. You know, DuckTales has always been a fun film, a fun show to watch if you're an adult, because there's intellectual adult humor. Yes. You know, there's fun literary references. Not all adult humor is, oh, look, boobs. <laughs> you know? Boobs is not actually adult humor. It's actually teenager humor. Yeah. As an adult, I do like teenager humor. Don't get me wrong. But I get the feeling sometimes people want to confuse teenager humor for adult humor. You think maybe that was the problem with Kevin Smith? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's definitely... And I think that was a problem with, with, with Tiger. And we who's left when we have Hit Monkey? Yeah. Which is just the weirdest thing to still be left. And I almost feel like Hit Monkey's just there because... What's a hit monkey, you know? And do you think maybe like uh, Tiger and Dazzler and even Howard the Duck? Because I mean, we've seen Howard the Duck in an end credit scene. Like, there, all those characters may appear live action at some point. Modoc, I don't think they're doing. Wait, Modoc Howard live the action. Duck is definitely someone that they're working on live action. Yeah, he even shows up in the in the freaking battle against Thanos for no reason, <laughs> like literally no reason. <laughs> Except that he happened to be like at the bar that some uh, that Drax was at when he got well no because Drax was not at a bar when he got sent I don't like literally no reason unless he made it I don't, again, wow he no was reason. what was it the, was literally that the, no reason for him to be there what was that the first Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't he in the collectors uh, collection yeah but by then him? he's already out yeah he's oh, running yeah, yeah. around nowhere well he didn't have a ship to get up maybe no one he couldn't find a ship to get off the planet. <laughs> Well, well, no. I mean, no. He's off. Oh, sorry. He's off the planet. Put my tongue. He's um, because the last time we see Howard is in Guardians Three, right? Guardians Three or Guardians Two? There hasn't been three yet. I don't know how many Guardians we had, but he's in the last Guardians film again because he's in the bar. Oh, okay. Where all the Ravagers are, and I don't know if any of the other Ravagers did they bring in the Ravagers in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so that's how he got there. He was with the Ravagers. Remember Stallone? <laughs> no, no, in, in, at the end of Endgame. Oh, wait, what? At the end of Endgame. Howard the Duck is in Endgame. Where were the Ravagers? Look it up, it's at- online. He's okay. In, when all, everyone's running out of the, the portals. 
one of the beings running out of that portal is Howard the Duck. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yes, you couldn't, you couldn't do Luke Cage, but let's make sure Howard the Duck gets in there. So, granted, you couldn't do Luke Cage because of legal reasons. Couldn't, yeah, I know. Couldn't do Daredevil. Couldn't, uh, none of them. Yeah, Howard yeah, the and, Duck, yeah. And it's, it, and it's an even there, well, you know, we would have had to explain exactly who this character is. Like, no, you wouldn't. But uh, the, but the other thing with like Howard the Duck and the Dazzler Tiger, I'm trying to remember when did they first uh, announce those? Was that under Loeb, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So maybe they are cleaning some Loeb house. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Loeb was still in charge of stuff up until very recently. So they, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So <clears throat> I'm pretty sure they announced it under Loeb. So maybe they were like, yeah, more housekeeping, and then plus it was you know, Kevin Smith. So well, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But it also means that we aren't going to get an offenders. But then again, it was called the offenders. Do you really think Disney wants to do the offenders? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You it's know, like maybe Hulu, but again, this is ran into Disney yeah. Plus. Yeah, so we're not like, we're, we're not DC, you know, you know, we're not DC Universe now. Nah. They're their own thing. They've got Brendan Fraser robot. Man. Plus, again, if you're going to do offenders, I think they're going to start with like Deadpool or something. You know, I mean, they got the. Well, and I think that might, and for what it's worth, that might even be where they're going, and maybe that is what they're building out to, because maybe they are going to say, let's put in Gwenpool. In in uh, Modoc, yeah, and let's have her make a bunch of references to the MCU. Well, I mean, they I were... think, hey, is Deadpool going to show up? Because you know he's part of the he, he was in the deal. Yeah, because I think they they were talking about doing a Deadpool animated thing on I think on FX or something. But this is before yeah. the deal went through. So and then it didn't go through. I wonder if that was part of it. They were like, oh yeah, hey, you know the deal might be coming through. You know Disney might be like, yeah. no, no, hold off, we'll do that once we get. Everything but in I, house. I do wonder if because what's like, as we said, what's left standing is Modoc and Hitmonkey, and Hitmonkey, you know, is going to be a mostly silent series. I so mean, it's going to be a lot of slapstick, violent Jackie Chan style stuff. Yeah, I mean, unless he has like supporting cast who can talk. Well, yeah, but what's going to sell it is the silent monkey. Yeah, yeah, he's the monkey. Yeah, that's what's cool about Hitmonkey. You could even he's do a like, monkey. You could even do like a shoots people. You could even do like a pet Avengers over there or something. You know? Oh, we lockjaw, so lockjaw. I, I, if anyone, the one redeemable character if in the humans, humans yes. yes. You know, Lockjaw and Ms. Marvel is like, where are you from, boy? Oh, you can't talk and can never ever tell me where you came from, can you, little boy? That's okay. See him wearing a sign around his collar. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> oh, but that reminds me. So, John Walker. Yes! Uh man, they put up I don't pictures. Think this is comic book John Walker. They put they well, hey, in the comics, man. First he was Super Patriot, then he took over for Steve Rogers. He wore the Captain America suit. I know, but but you here's what we're gonna tell you. When you the first shot they have of him with his little arm uniform with the brace on, yes, he's doing this. Uh huh. He's being this yes nice guy. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling he's a Captain America super fan. I think they they are going to be merging the D-Man into the John Walker character. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And for what it's worth, here's what here's what, here's my big prediction. They're going to do D-Man, John Walker, and William Burnside kind of mushed into one character here. Maybe. And it's going to be that idea of you know I'm a nice guy, and I get this I get this power boost. And it's a little bit based on some Mr. Hyde stuff we had laid around. I mean, I mean, in the comics, he was, I mean, he was a little arrogant, but he was, he started out kind of as a sort of a nice guy. I mean, he wanted to be the next Captain America. He was basically like, oh, Steve Rogers, you're kind of yeah. old fashioned. I'm going to be the new Captain America, which he eventually gets to be. But then once his parents get killed, that's when he goes off the deep end and starts getting ultra violent. Yeah, but I get the feeling that they're going to try and do that idea of the degrading. The, the, the mental degra degradation aspect of the super soldier serum. Maybe. You know, and they might even bring up, you know, well, you know, remember the Patriot where we, this is a variation of what we were using with the Patriot. Yeah. You know, so this is a mix of what we used on the Patriot, which was actually Hyde formula, plus some super soldier serum, plus a little bit of old Moxie Cola we had laying around from the days yeah. when they put a little super soldier serum in that. And again, and again, it's like, you know, like we were talking on Capes Lat and Lunatics 141 scroll down, you know, again, modern co modern superheroes, someone has to lose parents. I mean, you know, you paint them, you know, they sh give him his own Ma and Pa Kent, you know, make people care about them. And then it's just like, gun him down, you know, super, you know, bad serum plus yeah. death of parents. Yeah, he's going to get, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly how they go with it, I don't know, but I think he's going to be coming off really as this 
guy who wants to be a good Captain America wants to be um wants to be Steve Rogers. And yeah, maybe he meets a tragedy, or maybe it's the the formula. Or best. You know, or maybe it's any number of things, you know. Especially if there's like, oh, didn't we tell you if you don't get your daily dose they're gonna they'll do the power broker line where if you don't get your daily doses, you're gonna go start to go through withdrawal. Yeah. And when you start to go with do withdrawal, you're gonna start, you know, having seizures and you could die. Uh so why don't you go gather up some mutants for us now? And in fact that's like where you might get the mutants interview. Where it's sure. like, you know, we're gonna get the mutant resist you know, we're gonna get the old uh um I forgot what they called themselves, but the original mutant resistance group, they're actually a bunch of old yes. uh, X-Men villains, yeah. Keeper and Lifter and Shot, Ch- and he was called Shocker, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just all these guys who are, who are mutants who are like, no, we're not going to have a mutant registration act, you know, cannon fodder, <laughs> cannon fodder. Yeah. You know, um, but I do think it's an interesting I think they're going to be doing a lot with John Walker in this, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to be not the John Walker we're used to. I think it's going to be a much more, even a Reb Brownie ish uh, Captain America. If you all remember Reb Brown, yeah, you know, maybe kind of a surfer dude. But look for a van. Um, and I wonder, <laughs> and I wonder if after this first season, if they're going to skip a couple steps and he's just going to join Zemo's Thunderbolts. Well, you know, Zemo's an interesting character because again, there's a talk about oh, that's Cap Shield. Mm-hmm. Now, originally I said that's not Cap Shield because it has because the circles are white. Yeah, but other pictures you do see a little bit more silver to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do not think it is Cap Shield. I do think that is a shield made of leftover Ultron parts because there was a lot of leftover Ultron parts scattered all over freaking Sokovia. Where, where who's from? Zemo. Zemo. Zemo from Sokovia in this universe. And, and again, and, and again, in this universe, it's not as hard as like in the comics to make one of those shields. All you need is some vibranium. Exactly. It's not even like you know, fancy stuff. It's although maybe they are going to real. Actually, it's not pure. But the actual cap shield isn't pure vibranium. It's actually a specialized um, vibranium adamantium. Yeah, it's, it's this new thing they call the adamantium. <laughs> adamantium. We got we got, we, we got some from a top secret project in Canada. <laughs> Oh. Uh, what's his name? McLaren, McFarland, Mickey D. I don't know. Who? The original inventor of adamantium. Oh, uh, Mick. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, he appears in Avengers. I don't think it's Canadian when they first created it. But then they imply that actually there was this other. That it was. See, I did a great little bit about that recently where they think, well, here's where it's invented, and here's how it got retconned into being in Wolverine. Yes. Because, uh, well, actually, this guy was working during World War II, and he created it then, and then he recreated other versions of it. And so you have, like, secondary adamantium and tertiary adamantium. None of it is as good as Cap Shield. So, and even that got cut up by Thanos, so, you know. <laughs> um, so what good is it? I don't know. Um, I mean, that thing was, was altering reality, though. I mean... I mean, if it if it could if it could destroy half the life in the universe, I mean, come on, it could. Well, that was it. no, he didn't have the. It wasn't the gun. It was the his sword, oh, his, yeah. his helicopter blade. Yeah, uh, yeah. Know. Maybe that was that, they had to have the Thanos copter in there somewhere. Maybe that was uh, maybe that was adamantium. Yeah, oh, exactly. I mean, you know, well, they made pin particles, so I guess they could probably make adamantium. It's like, dude, True. you can like manipulate things on the molecular level in the in in the far flung like past of science galaxy far far away um uh, oh wait uh dr mac maclean m-a-c-l-e-a-n proto adamantium and he's never able to re replicate it but does create true adamantium in the process he creates a lot of other stuff however he's a great metallurgist there's no arguing there well yeah it was some accident too it's like he wasn't mean to do it or yeah he fell asleep. Yes. Literally, he fell asleep. They basically did the vulcanized rubber story. <laughs> what about adamantium? Yes. Where he's like, oh, fudge. You know, he, you know, where he said he was asleep, but actually he was, he was drunk and he knocked something in. He doesn't know what he knocked in. You know, that was always the plot of a lot of, a lot of, they even had that at Wonder Woman once where, you know, the guy who played Radar was cleaning a lab and suddenly because of the chemicals he sprayed to clean up in the lab, it like reacted with a, a a thing that created a bomb. So, waka waka. 
I did, uh, I did see it uh, repeat a match the one time, and I swear Radar is reading a copy of Avengers. I'm like, wait a minute. Isn't this supposed to be the Korean War in the 50s? How does he have an Avengers issue? It was the 1950s Avengers. It was the Agents of Atlas. It's from an alternate universe where the Avengers were formed in the 50s, and that's Jimmy Woo and Venus. and Nathan. I don't know. I, th- I swear I saw Goliath or somebody on that cover. Yeah. I don't know. No. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that, because they yeah. didn't because they didn't know a lot of comic book news were going to be watching the show. I know, I know, I know. They were like, no, we're just making a show. They go to the store and get some comic books for for Radar to read because we want to show that he's an innocent young person. I know. I who know. shouldn't be in a place of work because it's too scary for a young kid. Meanwhile, he's like in his 30s when he's making the show. He just has a baby face, but you know. I know. Like me. Exactly. Uh That's why you got to grow yeah, that beard. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I mean, I am... Very excited for Modok. I'm very excited for uh, Captain America and Bucky, the series. I know. I can't wait for that. And um, very interested in WandaVision. Yes. Because Wanda, the writer is now the start, the writer on Captain Marvel 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yep. And which is important because obviously that's a gig this person wanted because they put Monica Rambeau into WandaVision. Mm. Which again shows that Marvel's thinking this stuff like a few steps ahead. So they're like, okay, we want you to do a show. We want you to put in Monica Rambeau. We've introduced her. What do you do with this story? We like what you did with that story. We want you to do this other story. Nice. You know, it's like their farm team. You know, or it's like, hey, this writer's developing this character. So hey, let you know, let's have her have yeah. this writer follow well, the character. Exactly. And I do think, and that's going to be the to me that what's going to be, I'm. Here's the thing about Ms. about Captain Marvel, because I went back and watched the old Superhero Squad uh, recently, because you can watch it on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. and it is as fun and enjoyable as it was when it first came out. But I noticed that M- Ms. Marvel, because she was still Ms. Marvel then, was really a hard character to like. <laughs> she's super capable, but she's super, but super knows she's capable and yells at people a lot and doesn't like to listen to people. <laughs> And you compare that to a character like Cap, who is just totally, you know, just this really nice guy who people respect. And sometimes he's wrong, but at least he's nice about it, you know? Hey, he's Mr. Wrong. He doesn't always assume he's right, even though he does tell people, listen, this is probably a good idea. Hey, yeah. he's, he's literally Mr. Rogers. Now, Tony Stark, on the other hand, is also a big jerk. Mm-hmm. Now, and he does, but he gets away with it because he's charming. <laughs> But again, I think there's a quality of that where if you're charming, people let you be a jerk. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but it is something I know. And I think maybe what they're trying to say is, you know, maybe we shouldn't be leaning into that curve with Captain Marvel. Yeah, no. Maybe we shouldn't have her be a, a, a unapologetic jerk to people like Tony Stark. Maybe we should actually make her be a person who is wise and circumspect in her thought processes. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's where they want to build her more toward. Because I do think, and again, within the context of that first Captain Marvel movie, there's a lot going on with her. You know, you know, bamnesia and brainwashing and all this kind of stuff. You know, uh, noble warrior heroes kind of built it and smashed into her head. You know, <laughs> a lot of a lot of you know four lights kind of stuff. Yes. Um. And so I can forgive her for that. And I think they made her better in, in Endgame. And I think that this is about the evolution of the character. And so I do think WandaVision is going, that character that is developing in WandaVision with Monica Rambeau, when she interacts with Carol in, uh, Captain Marvel 2, Electric Marvel 2, is going to be a better film. That's my prediction. I'm hoping for it. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, want to talk some comic books? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, one comic book we didn't get to yet, uh, at the other show. Uh, those are my alternate comics that I did read, which is Fantastic Four number something that I can't find. There it is. 18, I believe. Nope, that's Old Man Quill. That's got to be weird. Where's my, where's my Fantastic Four? Fantastic Four uh, 18. Okay, yeah, Fantastic Four 18. Yes. Um, oh, I like the book. You know, I can't find it now, but I like it. <laughs> it's on the fourth somewhere. Yeah, maybe that's it. But anyway, um, nope, that's Conan, uh, twenty ninety nine. Oh, I gotta organize my comic books, Philip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the book. Uh, you know, you find out that actually, you know, as as Reed realized, um, you know, you were the one that sent the 
to wave at us and you amplified it. You like really screwed us over, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, and, and I like Sue, like calling me out. It's like, yeah, I get it. You know, you figured it out, but did you think about how that's going to affect everything else around us right now? <laughs> you realize how that's going to cause, basically you realize you're violating the prime directive here, Reed, you know? And you basically sent Ben to kill this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. It's like, you really think that, like, how do you think Ben's going to react when he hears that, oh, he's a monster because this dude turned him into a monster. And then we actually find out that, which is interesting with the whole monster aspect of it, is like, was this guy intentionally turning people into monsters or was it just when a random monster was created, he said to this guy, look, I need you to be the monsters for our people to fight. Well, yeah, didn't they, isn't that what they said? It's like that the head monster was like in was like in the, in on it with him. Well, yeah, but we don't know if that was his plan when he turned into a monster, uh, okay, or if he turned him into a monster for that purpose. Yeah. So we don't know how far along the line he was in on it. So it's like, and here's the thing: he might have intentionally turned him into a monster, mm-hmm. and then told him, "Look, you know, I want to work with you. You're still my friend. I want you to help us out with this." Um, because we need to train, you know, but if he could have controlled how these cosmic rays would react, was that intentional? Or was that unintentional? Like, did, did it that, oh, now I have a monster. Oh, I know what I'll do with a monster. Or was it like, ha, ah, I'll make a monster and that's going to be part of my plan. We don't know, but we might find that out in next episode, you know, because apparently Reed gets mad next episode. Yes. Everybody's getting mad in all this. And there's a great bit about the um, soulmates in this, which I really like, with Johnny and uh, the girl guy, you know, Mm -hmm. which is like, look, dude, it's, you know, the the soulmate isn't the person that you, like, meet and fall in love with. It's the person that is there with you the whole time. You know, that's the person that picks you up when you fall down. Well, yeah, because Johnny's like my soulmate, and he's like, oh, the girl you just met? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Classic Johnny Storm. Go back to Elijah. Again, it just it this this whole the storyline just smacked of inhumans for me, to me, you know, oh the outsiders and Johnny falls for the girl. Yeah, well, you know, it, they like to rhyme. <laughs> you know, it's it's the hits. It's mm-hmm. you know, and that's the thing, it's like it's not like you can say that's not a good story. And I yeah. don't think this is a bad story. Mm-mm. But you know, I do think that, yeah, it, it's like very similar. Well, it's not very similar. The Inhumans didn't turn the Fantastic Four into monsters. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying there are some. <laughs> Although they did have their um, was Ultra Humanites or whatever they called those. The oh, uh, the 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 prime Elf, Alpha Primates or yeah, Alpha, alpha primates, Primitives yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, their slave race. Philip. Yes, yes. They did have their slave race that suddenly got upset about being slaves. Yes. Um, gee, wonder why. <laughs> <clears throat> why is Maximus the mad the bad guy when he just wants to free these slaves you know it's like, mm-hmm. but of course he wanted to free the slaves but not because he wanted to free the slaves but because they were useful cannon fodder you know that's the crux of the biscuit oh anyway uh, but that was Fantastic Four I mean you know we'll see where it goes next obviously they completely decimated this entire culture <laughs> really aren't playing by the prime directive rules here but yeah no. You know, with their little old school rocket to fly to where they wanted to go. And maybe what, you know, you did exactly what he said you would do. You totally destroyed our culture and our city. <laughs> yeah, so they said at the end, yeah. Yeah, but then again, it's self fulfilling prophecy. I know that would have happened if this guy hadn't. Hadn't bombarded them, yes. <laughs> yeah, they had just shown up. Um, but he was like, oh, no, I can't let them come here because they'll violate our perfect world. It's like, so... Really, he had already destroyed their world. Yes. The minute he decided to defend it, quote unquote, you know. So, and that's our moral lesson. Yeah, the more you know. Uh-huh. A little star with the rainbow there. Um, yeah, I uh, got my alternate comics. Finally read those. Um, came out on the Wednesday. It's always good. Uh, Gods and Gears number two. We're building a lot of a lot of backstory in Gods and Gears. Hmm. There's like. People have been turned into gorillas. There's magic. We've got time travelers, some kind of crazy race car gods. I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it jumps around a lot. And so I'm I'm worried it doesn't have a lot of story cohesion. So that's a little worry for me. Did, Did you forget the other Marvel book this week? 
Oh, 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 Serpent Crown. Yes, of course. Yes, Serpent War. Yes. Serpent War. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Again, Franklin Richards, what are you doing? Because <laughs> um, now apparently it's a worm crown that uh, a call is being given in from Lemur- the Lemurian worm crown. I don't know. Um, or they give the serpent crown a different origin or something. Yeah. Well, well, except now the serpent crown. So, and the, the idea is, is that they're messing with the time screen. Yes. You know, so the serpent crown, which was originally Set. It's now this character, the worm, yes. who is actually like worse than Set. You know, <laughs> like who Mephisto and Satanish. You know, it's like well, I actually, you know, the Mephisto and Dormammu. It's like no, I actually need Mephisto to keep Dormammu at bay. You say no, you leave my you leave my humans alone. I'm manipulating these people. Um, <laughs> these are my babies to manipulate. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting, whatever it is. Um, you know, uh, but I li- what I like about it is what they do with uh, Moon Knight at the end. Hmm. Yeah. And where he now has the power of Kanchu within him. And also, for what it's worth, verification that, nope, Kanchu 100% real. Oh, yeah. they, they, uh, they Back in the day, they, they would make it ambiguous. But yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. Totally. Yep. Nope. This is the world of gods totally and ambiguous. monsters. And <laughs> Kanchu, totally a thing. What I like best about it is like that last, not the last, but like, uh, the that when he sees the world now, it's the world that when he was like escaping from the mental institution, mm-hmm. yes, with New York with the sand and the you know things. It's like now th- that's reality, and that was reality. That was the problem is that when he was in the mental institution, it's because he was seeing what Kanchu wanted him to see. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, do you think? Hmm. I don't know. It just seems like I I don't think Moon Knight's uh, well, I mean, he's finally getting a TV series, or well, a Disney Plus series, but do you think this is going to play a part in it? Yeah, I think... That, here's my actual prediction. They're tired of the Batman comparisons. They've decided to make uh, Moon Knight Superman. Yes. <laughs> it's well, like, mm. we'll literally give him a holy mission. Well, make him Shazam. <laughs> you know, make him... Well, he's got glowing eyes. He, and like I said, remember, Moon Knight used to have Class 100 strength during a full moon. Yes. He was as strong as the Hulk during a full moon. Now he's got a little bit of Kanchu in him the whole time. Meaning that he is always going to have bulletproof skin, class 100 strength. He is going to be Batman, Superman combined. He's going to be super bat. <laughs> it's just, you know, he's gonna, I don't know. I think it's just confusing for people because they always retcon him. You know, first he had strength because of a werewolf fight. Then it was, con- I guess it was Kanchu gave him this strength. And yeah, now it's Kanchu again. Yeah, but. well, you know, it's, hey, Kanchu has to do what he has to do. Has to work within his limit, you know. Yes, uh, that's the thing. It's like you can build it out however you want to build it out, but where? What I would here's what I'm gonna say: It's the new Fifty Two. You know, uh-huh. Franklin rebuilt the universe. This is just the way it is now. This is our universe now. We're gonna accept it. I guess so. <laughs> you know, um, but I like how they built out the Howard verse. Yes, and honestly, I was like, oh wow, man, it's the Howard Avengers. You know. Uh, <laughs> Because it really is like the Avengers. It's like, oh, it's a team. And it's like, what if all of these characters that this guy wrote just got together using this conceit of the guy who lives a thousand lifetimes, you know? Yes. And writes, writes the stories. And that is a beautiful concept. And so I don't think we've seen the last of the, of the, of the serpent, of the serpent war army getting back together again. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought I heard. I thought they said something about maybe another miniseries coming up. Yeah, well, I think it sold well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think this was a hard... I, I think this was, you know, one that people really liked. It really brought in... Like like I said, I, I do not know how Disney got the entire Howard estate, but I get the feeling that it's, it's a lot like with a lot of every... Like when they get... When they got Marvel and when they got Jim Henson, was they said, look, we can take care of this property forever for you. If you care about this property, you give it to you. You sell it to us for a nice sum. We are going to be very respectful of it because look at how respectful we are of everything else here. Because for what it's worth, they actually have been insanely respectful to Star Wars, very respectful to superheroes and Marvel comics. You know, there's not a lot that they have really stepped on. In, you know, in humans was just a mistake. We can all agree to that. That was just 
you know, that was a misstep. That was, you know, those kind of things happen. But in general, we try to be as honest and forthright about intellectual property as we can because that's our bread and butter. Oh, so, yes. Here we go. Conan's foray into the Marvel Universe continues this February in Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown. There we go. I mean, yeah, Conan is central to this. And I think they, and I like how they're integrating Moon Knight into the myth, the mm -hmm. mythos. And that's how they're going to build this out. You know, they're going to, they want when Moon Knight drops, it's going to be a really awesome Moon Knight. And how they're going to deal with this evolution of Moon Knight, I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if they backdoor Conan into the Moon Knight story uh, oh. when they get to Disney World. Oh, Charlie, yes, sir. What? Issue, I think, I guess it's like a five issue miniseries, but mm -hmm. issue two Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown. Guess who guest stars? Gwenpool? Black Cat. Oh, Black Cat. Oh, we just got to steal it. Yes. You gotta steal them all. Well, you know what? Black Cat. Oh, see, now that is a couple I could see getting together. And I believe, I think it's at least some of this is taking place in Vegas because they're mentioning Mephisto, too. Oh. <laughs> and, okay, let me, here's, here's one thing <gasps> I really want. Conan, Conan and Black Cat are going to get at one of those Vegas weddings. I want Conan to start wearing pants. Because if you remember when Conan was stuck in the 21st century, the la or the 20th century the last time. After he got stuck there, he started wearing pants because, you know, nobody wears a loincloth. That's stupid. Why would I wear a loincloth? No. First off, they have pants now, and that these are fine. These, these are fine clothes. They're not causing me any trouble, you know? So I want Conan to start wearing pants. And he can still have a sword at his side. Although, actually, in when he was in the, when he, and when it's Conan stuck in the 20th century, you know, he actually carries knives. And he's like, you know, he's basically a knife thrower. And as they say, you know, I love, it's this great scene when he escapes from jail after he gets arrested at the top of the Guggenheim Museum. Because <laughs> he misses the lightning bolt and sends him back. Uh, you know, he like breaks out of, you know, he snaps the chains because these, these little chains, they trapped me in. <laughs> these wouldn't hold a child. <laughs> he like snaps and then he like runs. He goes to the bars and the windows. Ah, but luck is with him today. And he pulls the, bar out of the window and they like shoot him in the arm and like oh I'm, I've been struck by the magic weapon I must run um and, but then like the judge says you brought me a super villain you yeah. brought me a god darn super villain <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know and then of course and that's the whole scene where he goes you know he has to clean the wound because a magic wound is the most dangerous and he pulls it out and it's like a little slug he looks and like that's not a magic weapon that's a freaking slingshot they shot me with a slingshot. This is, oh, guess this universe is, I guess this world isn't so hard to understand after all. And like, he's already been to a brothel and he's been to a bar and he knows that, okay, this, I know this world. Eventually he's going to put on a pair of pants. Let Conan wear pants. Conan does. Or at least a kill. Conan sheathed his sword for no one. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, especially if he wants to interact with this world, you know? Mm hmm. You know, although I guess parts of him doesn't really want to, but then, you know, he's going to want to, he's going to get lonely, he's going to get bored. And he also probably, it, here's the thing, when people say, oh no, you got to wear the loincloth, man, that's your brand. It's like, yeah. what the heck are you talking about? I don't have a brand. I'm Conan. That's not a brand. I'm Team Coco. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah, so fight for pants for Conan. Pants for Conan. Hashtag pants for Conan. Oh, um, that is that is my that is my mission in life to see Conan wear pants again. Um, Make that hashtag go viral. Look that issue up. It's a really a great issue of what if. What if Conan was trapped in the 20th century? Because they did the one where he visits, and then when he's trapped, and he sort of has to find his way through life. And he doesn't get the advantage of you know getting sent to the savage land and you know running into a bunch of superheroes right off the bat. Eventually, he just winds up in New York City. He's like, okay, well, this is a city like every other city I've ever seen. There's beggars. There's merchants. Okay, let's form a gang. Let's take over the city. <laughs> Who's this pink kingpin guy? Okay. <laughs> he never meets the kingpin. But he does knock over a museum and has to fight Captain America, which is really a great scene. Wow. Because he actually stabbed Captain America in the arm. It is really awesome when he fights Captain America. Because he's like, oh, finally someone in this planet that can actually challenge me. Um, that's my biggest worry with Conan lately is that they've been making him a little too haughty. 
I yes. don't like a haughty Conan. I like a Conan that understands how close Steph is. Although we do get a lot of an, an, another good bit of crumb with this, and oh I love the nice bit between Set and Kanchu at the end. Yes, where like Set's like, "You say, spared me, I wouldn't have spared you." He's like, "Of course you wouldn't. That's not your nature, you know." Mm-hmm. But there's an order to the universe, you know, and we elder gods have certain responsibilities, and you have to be here because you are the thing that battles the worm. And it's nice. It makes you wonder if Kanchu will eventually get retconned into being an elder god as well, mm. like Gaia. Yeah, you know, which would be awesome. Which again puts New Moon Knight on that Thor level because Thor is a god with Gaia. He is the chosen prophet of Kanchu. You know. Hey, hey, not to switch, like not to switch subjects here, but um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember uh the whole thing with Del, the Red Skull being Del Rusk in the comics. Mm-hmm. What was his? What was Del Rusk's position in the government? Uh, he was. Oh, he was a. He was actually. I think he was. Was he a secretary of something? Was it defense? Yeah, I think he was like the secretary of defense. Yeah. Because if you look at that John Walker picture, if you zoom in on that podium behind him, you can mm-hmm. see the word defense. So I don't know if at the top, if it's saying Department of Defense. Oh, could be. Yeah. Well, you know, here's what, and this is one of the things I was thinking about Del Rusk. You know, if the Red Skull is presumed dead. Which he would be after World War II. Oh, yeah. He hasn't been hit you know, decades. Yeah. Um, you know, Zemo, he's got those... Uh, not Zemo. Um, oh, what's his name? Zola. Zola. Zola's got those freaking clone bats. Yeah. You know, like he made those Hitler clones. Um, <laughs> that's how Bucky killed Hitler. You know, Everyone always got mad. Oh, how could they say Bucky, Bucky killed Hitler? Well, lots of people killed Hitler. <laughs> he's like, there's like six Hitlers in the uh, Marvel Universe. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, that was something I wanted to talk about. I didn't even mention this to you. Iron Man 2020. Yes. Big prediction. Big, big prediction. Get ready, people. That's not Machine Man. That's the hate monger. Ooh. His memory tapes got uploaded to Machine Man. Oh. And that's why he's being such a jerk. Oh. Oh, we're the superior beings. We're the robots. We must wipe out the humans. You know, that's why the robots are rebelling. Because the hate monger got uploaded to freaking Stack. Well, I forget his first name, but yeah, but to Machine Man. Yeah. Because you ever, every other depiction of Machine Man prior to this, he's always kind of like Lieutenant Commander Data in it, you know? Yeah, I mean, the last couple of years they tried to paint him as like a jerk, but I mean, I mean, I would love for that. Yeah, because he's not like classic yeah. Machine Man now. Building the whole. You know, and then you have, because I was thinking, oh man, you know, I wonder if like the Psycho Man's involved in this. Because it really seems like people are getting really manipulated to act like total idiots. Yeah. And I was like, oh wait, Psycho Man, last time I saw the Psycho Man was working with the Hate Monger back in, you know, the 80s. Yeah. What if it's the Hate Monger? Like, oh yeah, that's right. He, he's got memory tape. He's an AI, just like, just like Tony Stark. And it also explains why he's accepting Tony Stark into his group. Because, mm. like himself, he's memory tape uploaded onto a uh, machine. Yeah. And that's what this is all going to be. And mark my word, Machine Man is the hate monger. Oh, nice. And he's riling up all the robots, manipulating them with his hate rays, and manipulating the humans, too, to cause the war. Mm. Because the whole point is you can't seize power unless you have the war. You must... Sow the hate and get people to act irrationally, which is why Iron Man's acting irrationally. Hmm. You know, because AI isn't new technology. It's like cloning. It's like we had this stuff yes. in the forties. What are you talking about? <laughs> we, we, we had we've had artificial sentient beings since the forties. Maybe there's more of them now, but it's not like these aren't things we've dealt with, and there probably are already laws on the books about them. For God's sakes. Jim Hammond was a cop, like a sworn in NYPD officer. Okay. So it's like, yeah, we actually have a long precedent of the citizenship of robots. So moving right along. So yeah, that's my big prediction. Nice. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, um, yeah, Mighty Mascots was cool. Uh, apparently this is an ongoing. I haven't finished this book yet. This is, I think it's like the first five issues of it, but they're getting another run in April. Because I guess it was a big seller. Hmm. And the idea is that basically Ooh. there's a chemical that makes, like, 
essentially make cartoon characters come to life, but only like the mascots of cereal companies. Hmm. And like I've only read it so far, and we have the the cavity creeps basically, and then they get the crest the, or the crown forced to defeat them. You know, the you remember the cavity creeps and the crest. Yes. Thing? But they are like all evil and like, no, you've been tainted by the decay. We must destroy you as well. Hmm. Bum bum bum. So as far as I've gotten it, but it's really exciting. It's a five dollar book. Oh. But it's you know, it's a freaking freaking trade paperback. It's like as big as those ten dollar books. Phil's always fine. <laughs> so anyway, so what else is there, Philip? Anything you want to talk about? Uh no, I think we're good. We're we're close. We're to good. Now. We cover a lot yeah. here. Farm some moisture and uh, don't be a space wizard. That's my advice to the world. Howard the Duck, John Walker. Uh, yeah, we got them all in there. Yeah. Okay. So, Philip, uh, in the meantime, if they would like to reach out to you and touch you and talk to you and, you know, buy a book or something, how can they do that? Uh, if, you always, if you want to get a hold of me, you can always email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And you can always get a hold of us at the Capes and Lunatics at uh, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Uh, the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And again, yeah, support the sponsors, Tweaked Audio, uh, Hunt a Killer, Pod Life the Book, and Digital on Paperback. And uh, check out the Southgate Media Group link to Amazon.com. Uh, send, send the company a few cents bringing such fine programming as super connectivity and of course if you'd like to write to me that old-fashioned email way the way our mothers and fathers once did many years ago do so at super connectivity blog at gmail.com that's super connectivity blog all one word at gmail.com of course follow me on the twitter say like with edge of shield it's coming back it's the last broadcast show ever and maybe uh the final episode of um uh the good place if i remember it at Charlie Esser, the C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us here on Super Connectivity. Why don't you come on back and Super Connect with us again? Good night! Good night. Just like you're asking, so when I fart, did you hear that? No. Okay, good. Oh, it's going to be the new conspiracy theory. Everyone's going to be listening to you now, see if they can hear your fart. No, no, well, you can see it in my face, but. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching the video feed, you get an extra treat. Is that, uh, a, is that a Charlie <laughs> fart face or a sexy face? Oh, uh, even when I fart, I'm sexy. <laughs> uh, apple juice be flowing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>